I still think that each of us should be entitled to have as much say as we're capable of in how we die. We have to be alert to what someone deeply really wants and be prepared to honor it, even if it's painful to you, which it is. Brooks' case is different in some obvious respects. So he was able to be at home. He had technology support that kept him going. He had much more technological support than um, almost any patient at home. Right? So he had two things. He had all that a high-tech hospital could offer, or almost all, but he had it at home. It was great in an environment in which he was comfortable and could do what he loved, teach, and engage in um, social interaction with the people he cared about, and be free from the um, restrictions and routines of hospital life. So he had all that, but he it was still his choice about when it was an appropriate time to bring that to an end. He was quite aware of what he saw as his future, which would have been a future of declining function. He worked so hard at merely surviving, you know, all those respiratory complications and you know, all those awful spasms and he had this and that and all those infections, all this other stuff. And he worked like a champ both on physical recovery or physical functioning, but also on sheer survival. His voice was less adequate, his stamina was less adequate, his capacity to lead a class in the way that he had earlier, when he had been so effective as a, as a teacher, had diminished. And that was, I think, all part of his thinking. Teaching was the thing, or at least a thing, that kept him going. It was central to his life. And when he um, realized that he couldn't continue to do it in the same way, that was he, his sense was he'd done enough. When the hospice physician said that she would help him, and there was this enormous smile of relief. And then you knew that that was really his, his wish and that he was right in judging the time of it, timing of it. I mean, right now? Right now? Today? He had said to the, the hospice phys physician had said something about tomorrow and he said, I don't want there to be a tomorrow. I can't do tomorrow. I want right now. So, and he was at He was overjoyed to finally be released from his, a situation that had become increasingly difficult. And that although he had been willing to tolerate at some point earlier had become more and more difficult and he saw that it was time to end. It's clear that the other family members were on the same page with Brooke. The friends were on the same page with Brooke. The hospice people and the caregivers were on the same page as Brooke. It was of course hardest for me even though I guess I'm the most ardent champion of his right, that doesn't make it the easiest in practice. All of us together worked to make that as peaceful and painless and comfortable a death as he wanted. And then I lay next to him in bed as he died.